Good, hello, welcome back to making a Zelda style rupee. Last time we'd created the shapes and this animated shine glimmer. And now it's time to get into all of the pretty glow effects. We'll be diving deep into the node network this time. So here we go. So opening the network view, you should see something like this. The four layers are stacked on top of each other. Select them all, and right click along the top of the node view and select node view. These controls appear and press this button here with the three boxes and the arrow pointing up. Clicking OK will spread the nodes out and make them more tidy and even. You can see each of the nodes layered in order that they are in at the timeline. Base at the bottom, the backup at the top. Select everything and press Ctrl P. This will slap everything inside of one peg. So grab the free transform tool and now we can move everything around and place it in a much more central and appropriate position. Now it is time for effects. We need to create a bit of a play area so that we can make and build all of our effects within. So zooming out and bringing everything towards the top, open the node library view. You can get to it by going windows, node library. So first we need three composites. Place them out like so, directly underneath the main chain like that. Disconnect the right and the display from the top composite, bring them down and connect them to the bottom one. Now from the top composite, work down, creating this chain all the way down like so. This gives us a good play area for us to build effects within. The composite's there as sort of checkpoints that group everything together. Now activate render view. In the camera mode, there's the black and white flower and the blue flower. Turn that on and we will see all of the effects turn on in real time. First, pull out a glow into the play field and holding Alt down, drag it between the two composites. It will link in and turn the rupee into a blank gray thing. If we press down on the yellow box on the side of the glow, its properties will open up. About halfway down, there is an option called Use Source Color. By default, a glow is a single tone. Currently, it is gray. You know, I could open it up and change it to any other solid color, but if I activate use source color, it will use all the colors that were used to make up the shape. Therefore, the image comes back. We're going to increase its intensity to 3.8, making it very bright indeed, and wash out its radius to a massive 200. Bang, it washes so far out. We cannot even tell that it is a gem anymore. It's just a glowy blah. We're done with that glow, push it across to the right and bring a second glow out into the field. Connect its strings up from the composite and down into the next. Open its properties, we see a second grey rupee has appeared. Activate source colour once again. Its intensity will be staying at 1 and its radius will be brought up to 20. There we go. So everything's very glowy but it also just looks very blurry. So now we need to bring a crisp version of the rupee into view. How do we do that? Well, from the composite, if we just bring a raw string all the way down and connect it straight through the middle, there it is. We can make it wash even better into our glows by using blending modes, you know, like in Photoshop and stuff. So I'm gonna get a blending node using the Alt key, plug it into the middle string like so, open up its properties, and I'm going to choose difference. Cool. That's a pretty nice effect, I like that. But how does having a blending difference mode look with the white shine over the top? We can test everything out very easily by getting a render preview node and popping it in at the composite just above the display. So going back to the camera view, we can see it ticking away. So we'll be able to scroll through without having to wait. It looks pretty washed out and gross against the gray background though. So also at the lowest level of the hierarchy, Pull out a color card, plug it in, open its properties and change it from white to black. Shling. Note here that the difference mode is doing some unusual things to our white shine, giving it this dark edge to it. So I would like the shine to be affected by the glows, but not by the blending. Unfortunately, the blending goes right through the middle, so it's gonna be difficult to pull off. But because we made these composites at the top and the bottom, this section here sort of becomes like its own little unit. So if I select that little unit and go to the drop down menu at the top of the node view, go to nodes, duplicate selected nodes, I now have a second set that I can do other stuff with. It's important that I go to duplicate rather than just copy and pasting it because this creates independent nodes. If you copy and paste, it actually makes a clone, which means if you change any of these parameters, it could very well interfere with the original. So duplicating just keeps you above board and you're not gonna get any weird surprises later on. 
So now this shine, I can disconnect it and bring it down to my new set, delete the blending and connect our new one into the rest of the components. Ah, that's a big difference. With that, the rupee is done. Pretty cool, huh? There's a couple more things I can do to tidy up this network, just for OCD reasons. To keep these functioning as two separate units, bring out a new composite and connect both of these in like that and down to the render preview. I can turn the render preview off by hiding it. I'm going to bring the shine just down. We don't need this composite anymore. Keeps things nice and even. And the backup, because that's irrelevant, holding the option key down, separate it, and just leave it down at the bottom of the hierarchy, just floating in space. So it's there if I need it, but it's not gonna be bogging up my timeline at all. So now this little contraption is working pretty well. So what if I wanna get lots of rupees filling the field? Do I copy everything? That's a lot of unnecessary work. In fact, I can use the apply peg transformation tool. So I'm gonna get yet another composite, bring our rendering section down and pop this in at the top of the render preview because only one string can go into this. So if I just leave it switched off and a composite directly above it, I can pull as many strings into it as I dang well want. So in this space, I'm gonna get a few peg transformations like so. Um, also, if you find your computer starting to run a bit slowly, if there's too much going on here, it can be a good idea to have a second version of things just for working mode purposes. Get a new composite and pull a raw string down just from like the base artwork with absolutely nothing going on. And you can use that just to look at things in the meantime. So with my applied peg transformations, I'm gonna get another composite, connect them up to all the right hand ports of each one and bring a peg in connected to the left hand port of each one. So apply peg transformations allow you to have an object in more than one place at the same time because it's still referring back to the original artwork. If you saw the Rick and Morty video, that, excuse there. There we go, they're all going into one composite as well so I can just pull one string out. The other great thing about using lots of composites like this is they all act as visualization switches. So if I grab this one, which we're looking through at the moment and I turn it off and on, it will stop me from seeing literally everything that it's connected to, which is pretty cool. So we wanna be looking through the apply peg transformations. I'm gonna bring our raw artwork version into the top and selecting each of these four pegs, I can now move them all around the field and place them independently of one another. All of them referring back to the same layers and timing. This actually saves a lot of time and future-proof stuff as well. So you can see how the use of nodes allows you to build almost little applications and fun contraptions that allow you to swap, move things around with a lot of ease. So now that that's done, if I wanna see how it looks with all my crazy glows and things, all I gotta do now is switch over this raw composite with our glows one. Cool, there it is. So there we go, glistening Zelda style rupees. We covered a variety of different artwork drawing techniques, as well as node-based contraptions, two different glow groups, an artwork splitter system, and alternative view switches. Thank you for joining me, and yeah, try it yourself. Always happy to see your results, so please consider tweeting them at me if you give it a go. Have some fun, and I'll see you in the next one.